Hey everyone, welcome back to Installation 00, and today we continue our dive into the armor cores available in Halo Infinite, focusing today on the Eagle Strike armor core. It is worth noting at the onset that the Eagle Strike armor is part of a Fractures event armor core. That means that it's from an alternate universe interpretation of the mainline Halo universe. So, to get a feel for the Eagle Strike, We'll take a brief look at the context of this alternate universe, but be sure to subscribe if you want to learn more as there is a 00 narrated audiobook reading of the story The Last Sky Marshal, set in this alternative Fractures universe, written by the one and only Alex Haruspis Wakeford on the way, so definitely worth sticking around for that. In the meantime, let's touch base and get on with the lore. In this universe, the Covenant invaded the Sol system, forcing humanity to band together under the Unified Nations Security Confederation, the UNSC, to survive in a total war that became known as the Final War. The UNSC developed a model of energized plate armor called Eagle Strike that gave alchemically enhanced human soldiers a fighting chance against the vastly superior Covenant Army. The final war climaxed with scorched earth tactics and atomic weaponry, obliterating much of the leadership and infrastructure of both sides. Many years later, UNSC conscripts still blindly follow the orders of long dead generals, continuing their last stand against the mutant remnants of the Covenant in the hope of one day liberating their ruined world. Last of a series of energized plate armors issued to Unified Nations Security Confederation Special Forces, Eagle Strike is hardened against radiation, harsh environments, and the warped science of Covenant Arcano technology. Ruinously expensive to make, but practically required to survive Covenant assaults, the Eagle Strike helmet became both a symbol of resistance against the Covenant oppression and the high cost of war. Most famously used by the Northam Volunteers, the Brody became synonymous with brave UNSC defenders who fought and died on the chem scarred battlefields of Eastern Europa. The iconic M199X helmet was produced by the Hefley Radiator Company and Miss Rhea Bathworks to outfit troops sent to overthrow the Kigyar Thalassocracy. Kerberos helmets were first used by the notorious Capital Military Authority in their suppression of defeatist anti-war protesters in the years before the Carver Riots. Produced from scrap and leftover mechatronics, the Lead Belcher helmet was beloved by UNSC tunnel rats tasked with investigating Covenant Root Nora Archaeotech digger teams. While Covenant atomic activity is no longer detected on the moon, the fate of Commander Colby and his Sky Marshal clad astro rocket propelled heroes can now only be guessed at. Multifunction radio and message conduit for soldiers burdened with oversight by officers and advisors back at headquarters. The crawling mists unleashed by the Covenant in its last offensives killed most of those it touched, and warped those it didn't. UNSC countermeasures took time to develop, and were never fully effective. Even as the final war ground civilization into dust, the UNSC claimed it did not build killers. Those caught in the middle of the conflict begged to differ. Eventually, no one was safe from the draft, and the UNSC ordered peace officers to help meet increasingly impossible staffing demands. 
The worst terrors of the underdark and gloaming depths do not shy away from the light. Nothing has been heard on the Cosmocom from off-world Astro Rangers in years, but hopes remain undimmed. Supplemental flux generator and ammo for lengthy patrols. A typical chest rig used by army soldiers, the gas mask canister can safely store fresh food and, if extraordinarily lucky, tea. You can never have enough pouches to stash ammo, medical supplies and snacks. The trooper this belonged to won't be needing it anymore. There is nothing subtle about a half ton of energised plate, so why not go the extra few dozen kilos? In the early days of the war, these shoulder pads were used exclusively by armoured sappers. It remained in service long enough for that fact to fade into obscurity. These simple pauldrons were produced in astounding numbers by massive factories, cottage forges, and even battlefield workshops. They significantly increased the odds of survival for frontline soldiers, but death rolled a lot of dice. Issued to the troops late in the war, Treasonous rumours claimed these used shoddy materials and were crudely assembled. That was true, but it was also the best UNSC forces could procure from their bombed out industry and exhausted conscript workers. Veterans quickly learned to keep precious items close at hand, safe from sticky fingers and hungry vermin of all kinds. The acoustic screamers and knives mark these as field kits manufactured for veteran trench fighters. Between battles, the screamers were used to play music, and the knives were used as cutlery. Standard issue canteen and canteen cup. Their chemical coatings made water and protein starch rations taste like dirty socks, but at least it was safe to eat and drink. UNSC soldiers developed an entire subculture and elaborate rituals around knives and other blades. Though it did help build knife fighting skills, their true purpose was for passing the time and entertaining comrades. Cost reduced knee guards that were issued first to home guard troops, then to what remained of the frontline veterans. Not fancy but they do the job. Not actually made from discarded shovels, despite rumours. Improvised armour pieces held together by welding flux and hope. As the veterans say, protect your legs and they will carry you home. And that finishes up what we know of the Eagle Strike Armour Corps at present. It's worth bearing in mind there's actually still two more parts to this event that are yet to be seen, with the distinct possibility of additional armour components being brought in as part of this event. If this does happen in regards to the Eagle Strike Armour Corps, I will of course revisit this and add in these additional components. However, on a more immediate note, there is, of course, the narrative story that's gone along with this Fractures event that I will be covering in an upcoming lore video, and there are also two additional parts of that that have also not been released yet, which I will also cover as and when they release. So in that upcoming video, I will cover parts 1, 2 and 3, and part 4 launches on Tuesday the 27th so expect new Eagle Strike and Fractures lore immediately thereafter. But until then... 
Thanks for watching. Stick your comments down below and I look forward to what you have to say. And quick shout outs and thank yous to my patrons. Spartan10148, my devastatingly effective Metarch class and Scylla. Silver Spartan, Leon, Ram, Prophet Bear and Irrefutable Justice, my ever vigilant monitors. The careful tending of Alvin, Andrew, Brian, Cameron, Darian, Devon, Phantom, Flaming Halo, Cabal, Legions Lost, Michael, Spartan0137, The Cave Potato and Wolf Eclipse, my sub monitors. My growing fleet of Strato Sentinels and my most loyal of enforcers, and all my awesome sentinels, sentries, and constructors who have jumped aboard on Patreon to help support the channel. You have my debt of gratitude. And, as ever, Todd Morrison, my Tier Zero Transcendent YouTube member. Thanks for keeping my installation running on that glorious vacuum energy. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe, as it all helps the channel grow and helps me to continue to deliver this kind of content for you guys. And if you're ready for your next steps in evolution, head over to Patreon and become a patron there, or become a YouTube member to attain a higher state of being. Much love to all of you, take it easy everyone, and find peace in the domain.